In the village of Faleolupo, on the South Pacific island of Savai in Western Samoa, High Chief Fiono Senio tells village children a story. It is a story that was told to him by his grandfather. The story of Nafanua is just one chapter of a rich oral history here in Savai. For a thousand years, people of this tiny island chain have lived in harmony with each other, their traditions, and their environment. Samoans, like many indigenous people, have a way of seeing your very heart. And if you believe that they're savage or stupid or uncivilized, that that communicates without language. But if you respect them, you show them uh, dignity, and, and you have the humility to learn from them, you discover that they're extraordinary. Dr. Paul Cox is an ethnobotanist from Brigham Young University. Descended from a long line of scientists, Dr. Cox came to study the pharmaceutical mysteries shared by Savai'i's healers. My original reason for coming to the village was to study with the indigenous healers, to learn their knowledge about the plant. So we found a plant here that has a molecule that's extraordinarily active against the AIDS virus. Since his first visit to Faleolupo as a missionary in the 70s, Paul Cox has been more than a student of the region and its hidden treasures. He has been accepted by the Savai'i people as a learned brother and a valued member of the community. The Samoans firmly believe that their children are their future. Ten years ago, this commitment to education set in motion a drama that would change the history of Faleolupo. As chiefs and oranges to see that there is a school, so seeing that they have nowhere to raise the funds, the loggers came along and said, we'll build a school if you give us the logs. The agreement made, the ancient woods began giving way to bulldozers and chainsaws, decimating the only home of the Samoan flying fox, destroying an untold number of species of tropical and medicinal plants. Chief Fiono knew this logging would drain the life from his island. When the bulldozers rolled in, tribal elders simply stood by, watched, and wept. In just four years, the entire rainforest would be gone. I just felt I couldn't let this happen, and so I uh, oh, thought I'd stop it. A tribal meeting was hurriedly arranged. Chief Fuiano knew he had to overcome reservations other elders had about accepting Cox's offer. There was a day or two while the village had discussions that I didn't know what would happen, whether I'd be able to change anything or not. When I heard that they accepted uh, my offer to try help protect the forest, I was just elated to see him run miles with his machete. They didn't want any, anything else uh, wasted, and so he ran to send away the uh, loggers and told the loggers to leave and never to return. A lot of people talk about conservation. This man's put his life on the line. In just six months, Paul Cox returned to Hawaii with the money. The elders signed a covenant with the school fund donors to protect the rainforest for a 50-year period. The elders of Faleolupo bestowed their highest honor on Dr. Cox, making him an honorary chief. His Samoan title, Nafanua, after the ancient goddess who came from the sea to save the Savai'i people. Conservation is not an issue of foreigners. Conservation is an issue of indigenous people. And it isn't the World Wildlife Fund. It isn't Greenpeace. It isn't some foreign organization coming and preaching conservation. Fuyono recast the whole formula in the South Pacific so it's seen as an indigenous issue. It's a, in fact, it's the ultimate indigenous issue for these people to protect their forest and their land. And what he has done now has catalyzed a whole new conservation movement throughout the whole South Pacific. For outstanding environmental achievement in island nations, a 1997 Goldman Environmental Prize is awarded jointly to Dr. Paul Cox and Chief Fuiono Senio of the village of Faleolupo, Western Samoa.